Are you sure that you know everything about Steam? Well, I got some tips for you that you might reconsider because some of the things on Steam, I'm pretty sure you haven't actually discovered. So in today's video, I'll be talking about all that as I have 15 tips for Steam users. So let's get, get into the intro. If you're looking to be up to date with all the features that Steam pushes out, then all you have to do is switch your profile to a beta tester. All you have to do is simply go to Steam, Settings, and then Interface. And in the Client Beta Participation, you will normally have no beta chosen. You will switch to Steam Beta Update. Once you've done this, the Steam will ask for a restart. Simply do that and you're good to go. The next tip, if you are curious to know what games you have purchased or you simply want to go through the games that you have purchased in the past it's very simple all you have to do is hit that profile up in the corner after that go to your account details and in this section you will click the view purchase history over here you'll be able to see all the purchases that you made via steam as well if you're curious about getting other games for example if you got games that were via licenses or keys or something of a sort you can definitely go ahead and hit back and then view the license and product key activation over here you will see all games that you've activated and for example if you have demos or anything like that you can definitely remove them from there and simply not have them in your account next if you are interested in finding out how much you spent on steam there's a very simple way to do so first you have to go to help steam support scroll all the way down to my account then data related to your steam account and all the way down until you find external funds used and over here you can see how much you spend in total on your games yes i know that sometimes it can be daunting and there are other tools that you can find out uh, the same way like the steam db and you can go ahead and check that one but this one is particularly for your steam and it is much more accurate when it comes to that steam db does make a little bit of approximation so here you can see and cry how much you've spent if you want to find out how you can manage your library by simply transferring or removing games that you already have installed simply go to steam settings and then to storage over here you will see all the games that you have installed based on the directory that you have and you can simply transfer them between each directory if you have created if not you can simply create a new one if you have available what you have to do is simply tick that box and then choose either to move or uninstall so for example if you want to clear up a little bit your storage or you simply want to make a little bit of changes but not needing to uninstall or do anything like that this is an easy way to do so and it takes a couple of minutes until the transfer happens and you simply have all the things already functioning without you having to rescan your storage space if you're planning to manage your library there's a couple of things that you need to know so there's a few things that you can do in order to change the way your library actually looks so first off you have the view mode where you can switch between small mode and this is more simplified for those who are more minimalistic and just want to go and see only their library their friends and everything like that if you want to switch back to that you can simply go to large mode or if you prefer the steam deck version you can definitely go in big picture and that's gonna change up the way the whole thing looks this is a great way if you're planning to simply play games with a controller which is a great way and if you want to do this yes you can definitely do that but if you want to go back simply go to steam menu right in in the left down corner and then you go to power and after that you go to exit big picture the steam is gonna go back to its normal and that's pretty much it another thing that you can do in order for you to change the way this is laid out for example if you have a lot of games or you simply want to see less games you can go go to steam settings and then interface and then library and then you can choose between which one do you want to see as cards you can put to small and you can see that they're a lot smaller which is really cool medium and large so they occupy less or more space another thing that you can do with your library is simply change the way things look like for each game so for example if you have a game that you simply don't like how the card itself looks like so for example we 
have this game that doesn't have the whole library and there's a website that you can actually get this one so for example this one doesn't have that many really cool art style and stuff like that so if i'm gonna check for backlight retribution online all you I have to do is go to this website which is called steamgriddb.com and then simply go again to the name of the game which is black light retribution simply select that one and i will be getting pretty much everything that i have you obviously can find the original assets which are over there but if the developer did not introduce anything then obviously it's gonna be a problem and here you can choose which one you want to have if you install the plugin that they have it's much more easier you simply hit the bop or boop and then you click that one it's gonna do its thing and if you go to your library and you hit that back you can see that it has been changed and then you can choose the same thing for the other two and have the black light change as well and simply if it didn't refresh you can go back and have that however you like you can also change the location so you can right click on the art and then click to change the logo position you can have it in the middle you can have it down you can have it wherever you can even resize it if you want to if you don't like it that big and also what you can do is change the background so you can clear it out if you don't like it or you can choose a customized one and go with whatever you like for example i will go with teleplay for instance and you can have that one and then for the logo you can do the same thing so you can clear it if you didn't have any and then choose to set a custom logo and for instance we'll go and do the same thing and we're gonna just brand it with teleplay and it's just as simple as that you can do that kind of stuff you can also customize this one by going to manage and then simply go to set custom artwork and then you can choose that one if you like to and obviously you can put whatever over there and i can put that one and um that's it another thing that you can do in this settings on the library is to click this setting right here in the top left side and simply choose to check out different games based on their genre or a better feature you can go ahead and uh, look for games based on your friends so if if you want to check for somebody that you want to play with you can simply do that uh, i can go for example to choose armea and since her account is private i cannot see anything but if you choose with somebody for example i'll i'll pick adriano and if he's watching this video he's probably gonna notice but you can see what games you both have in common you can choose more friends if you want to for example aerostatic as well i can choose that and then you can see what games you can actually play together as a group that's a great feature if you want to play something co-op with your friends and you don't know what to do and another thing that you can do is to create collections and here you can customize them as however you like and these collections basically you put your games in in a way that you like for me i put them based on their genre and there are two ways to actually create this one you have the normal collection where you drag and drop the games or simply right click and add to that library or you create a dynamic group and then you simply name it to whatever you want like uh, unfinished and then you create a dynamic one and then you have installed locally and ready to play for example so that way you you have that one uh, but obviously some some of them will pop out still like uh, this ones with our which are completed but here you can see like what games you have installed and you want to go well, with that one you obviously can choose them based on genre if you want them to be vr or support controller or if you want them to have achievements or stuff like that you have a wide range of settings that you can test out and see whatever is the best dynamic features for you so this is a great feature if you're looking to customize and make a better use of your library with the new beta version that you just switched to you're obviously gonna have a couple of features that you cannot find on the stable version which is the recording so you can now record footages in game just as you did screenshots and you can simply do that by turning on a feature so to do that you go to steam setting and you scroll all the way down to game recording and here you will have probably the setting as off not the record and all you have to do is choose between the the two i prefer to have this one because i get to choose if i want to record and obviously you can change the settings on uh, the quality that you want to record so depending on the drive space that you have you'll have the possibility to try out and experiment whatever fits your need so if you're a content creator or you simply want to record this is an easy way to do so 
So if you want to test out how the recording actually works, simply you have to hit tab, which is going to open the overlay. And in the overlay section, you will have the record game. Over here, you can simply click on it and start recording or use the simple shortcut to start it. Once that is done, it's pretty much going to be saved up in the Steam itself. So if you want to access your recording, simply go to view and then you have a new option which says recordings and screenshots. You simply go to that and it's going to show all the recordings and screenshots that you want. Simply you can choose between clips or screenshots if you want to and you can manage it and save them however you like. Simply go to one of them, you can click them and then crop them or do anything of a sort. Next up, we're going to have family share and family view. So all you have to do is go to Steam, settings, and then family. And here you have the two options. The first one is the family share where you share between you and others the games that uh, you have in your library. Some of them are available and some of them are not. And the family view, which is more tailored for children. So if, if you have a, a child that you're trying to monitor and share the games, you can choose what they can see. For example, they won't be able to see the store or their friends or stuff like that. So that's all up to you. In order for you to add somebody in your family share it's quite simple you can go to manage steam family and unfortunately i'm full at the moment but usually you will have an option uh, down below where you can invite and then you can choose the person that you want to invite inside your family once you send them an invite if they are in the household it's very simple they just have to accept and usually the whole thing is straightforward you can choose if you want to have them as an adult or, the, or a child so that's very easy to monitor and as a child you can pretty much manage what games you want to distribute with them without having to uh, worry about them stepping on some games that you know underage or a little bit too mature for their likings if you have family members that are abroad there is a little bit of a tricky situation where you cannot necessarily add them because they need to, to come to uh, your house and in, in order for them to log in so there's a way to actually bypass that by simply going and connecting with them on discord and um, using the QR code you don't have to have their credentials and they don't have to have uh, your credentials they will log in in your PC accept the invitation from your PC and simply be able to be on your family library I've been doing this with my brother-in-law that is in the Philippines and it has helped me a lot to share with him the games that I have and he shares with me this is a great feature if you want to play together separate games and be able to test out games and see what works for you obviously you cannot play the same game in the same time unless you actually own the game as a second copy which is going to show over here for example there are three copies and simply go there and uh, change preferred copy and you can see other people from your library who have maybe the dlcs or they have the games and you don't simply have them you can simply choose that and play over that all settings and all saves and everything that you have had on your copy remains as they are so nothing changes all the achievements and everything like that stays for your particular profile so if you're playing a game from anybody you don't lose any kind of progress unless for example they get removed from your family then obviously there's gonna be a problem so yeah i think it's a hefty nice feature to have so in the past and especially on the stable version you weren't able to actually play when your family members were playing as well and vice versa but now you can as long as you have either two copies or you're playing separate games which is very nice so thank you valve if you're trying to be a little bit more private with what you're doing obviously there's a couple of things that you can do simply go to uh, your name and then your profile and from there on you can go to edit profile and in the privacy settings you will be able to see all the other settings that you can hide your friend list and just show it to your friends only or to nobody and simply put yourself private if you want to there's another way to actually private uh, yourself and that is your game you simply can click on one manage and then hide the game and that is gonna hide it for you but if you choose to not show it to anybody else you just uh, click make it private so all the stats all the achievements all the things that you're doing privated so nobody's gonna be able to see how many hours you've seen in counter-strike or team fortress or any other games that you're actually playing so i think it's a great feature if you want to keep yourself private very simple very nice and it's easy to manage if you like the images that are for cards for some of the games that you own you can simply download them and have them
them for your desktop or you simply can store them wherever you want all you have to do is go to the game itself that has cards and the cards are situated a lot a little bit lower uh below the notes and the achievements and simply click on one of them right click save screenshot that's it now for the store page i have a couple of tips and tricks that you can find a couple of things that are interesting for example you can find out which are the top sellers and all you have to do is go to your store and then after that new and then top sellers and simply you can see which are the top sellers on steam which is a nice feature and you can see which is the most popular thing on steam you can scroll even beyond the 100 mark but it's definitely a nice feature that you can check out you can also see the global thing so you can switch up and see whatever is globally or per country as itself and i think that's a great thing especially on discovering new things like what is more popular nowadays and uh, making lists about that or stuff like that so a really cool thing as i said if you're looking to discover new games on steam you can definitely do so in the store as well by going to the discover queue over here you'll be given a list of 10 games that you can go through some of them are dlcs others are recommendations based on what you played before and other times there will be some new titles that you might have not heard about once you go through one cycle you're gonna reach this part of the page and you can go ahead and try another queue so there's always something to discover it's a fun time and i think not a lot of people are using this feature enough if you want to find out what is popular among your friends you can also do that by simply going in the same section and then go all the way down to popular among friends and over here you can see what your friends have been spending the most time in and uh, obviously gary's mode is at the top i have a lot of friends that uh, have played that game for more than 400 hours as it seems and then there are other games as well and you can see what is popular amongst them and uh, maybe find games that you want to play with your friends which is a great feature uh, most wanted as well you can see a couple of recommendations from other people so you have that as well but th this whole thing uh, this section really is cool because you can see how much time people spend in the game it can give you like a broader view of how long the game is and how much people are invested in them so yeah definitely a great thing to know another great feature and i didn't know this one for quite some time now but i discovered it as i was browsing the whole store and that is an interactive recommendation which i find it really cool because it tailors games that are recommended based on how much you spend time with other games so you can choose here recommended for how popular uh, the games are or if they're more niche based so if you're choosing for something that is indie or a little bit more strange you can definitely find that one and choose how old or new the game is and i think that that is a really cool way to discover new games that might be something that you could be interested in and uh, definitely you can add a couple of filters and tags so you can discover even much more easier and have fun with this because uh, not a lot of people know about this one and it's definitely something that more people should know about and lastly as a bonus you can actually find out what is your system recommendation without having to go through the whole uh let me check my windows and stuff like that so simply all you have to do is go to help and then system information and pretty much steam has all the system information including that you have your controller connected and whatnot so this is a great tool that if you want to know more about your pc and if you want to share it with somebody and if you want to compare this one with other people and see what people are up to you can definitely check that one based on a survey made in june 2024 and you can see here what kind of uh, system pretty much is the most popular and what people actually have which is a great tool if you ask me and if you want to check out definitely go give it a try and let me know in the comments down below so that's the list of tips and tricks that i wanted to share with you let me know in the comments down below what do you think about the tips did any of the tips that i shared surprise you let me know in the comments down below also if you want to support this channel and you enjoy this kind of content feel free to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this my name is Vashal, and as always stay safe take care and happy gaming